All 94.9 FML with Fook and Michelle. We're very, very excited to have on the phone star of Full House, General Funny Guy, and he's in Salt Lake City tonight. Welcome to FML, Dave Coulier. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Lovely. Doing well. Uh, Friday and Saturday night at Wise Guys in West Valley. More info on their website. And I'm looking at a picture of you right now at your recent wedding in Montana, Dave. I was probably very inebriated that day. You uh, look great. Though this yeah. is a phenomenal photo. It's uh, Stamos, Candace, you, your new wife, Bob, and uh, Kimmy? Andrea Barber. That's yeah. right. Yeah, they all, uh, my dysfunctional Full House family showed up <laughs> for the wedding. It's so great. And, uh, you know, we, we are like a real family. So, you know, it, it was great that they got to come and um, celebrate with us. I, I kind of want to get into your new family in a second, but that was you know one thing that I've noticed over the years is that you guys seem to hang out more than say casts from other shows. Uh, like I never hear about the guys from Welcome Back Cotter getting together and shooting pool. <laughs> well, uh, you know we became lifelong friends, and and that's very unusual, as you're you're kind of hinting at, and and uh, you know we just click as friends, and and. I guess, I guess it's just weird, you know, for people to, to think that wow, you guys are a TV family, but you hang out in real life. But uh, you know, we love each other's company, and we're we're together quite often. Uh, yeah, I just thought that dynamic was was unusual. Um, was it maybe because the kids were kids in the show, and you guys were sort of like father or parental figures to them, watching them grow up? Well, for me personally, I'm attracted to both John Stamos and Bob Saget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. So that's that's it for me. But that you know, I'm just speaking for myself. They're statuesque. You know, we, we do have kind of uh, you know we call the kids on the show. I mean, obviously they're in their their thirties now, and and they're you know they have their own families, their own kids. But you know, we really uh, revered our relationship with them. And uh, Candace Cameron and I like to joke around when I was. When she was 10 years old, I, I took her to Cirque du Soleil. I took her to the circus. I was like, Candace, do you want to go see the circus? And she's like, okay. So I picked her up and took her to the circus when she was a kid. So, you know, we have great stories like that, and there's a lot of history behind us now, so it's fun. I'll tell you, it must be irritating to hang out with Stamos because this dude, he's just the best-looking man who doesn't hasn't seemed to have aged a day like a since the Full House days. Grecian oh, God. It's, it's amazing. He, he is a, an incredibly attractive man, and uh, if he could just, like, just pull just his hair off and, and set it, you know, in a bar, he'd still, his hair would still... <laughs> Get more women than I would. <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about your new woman. Uh, her name is Melissa Bring, and uh, how did you meet? What's her deal? Well, <laughs> I love that. What's her deal? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. She, like, uh, is she an entertainment <laughs> person or like a regular person? She is. She's a uh, a very talented photographer producer, and uh, I met her uh, almost ten years ago up in Montana on a boys' trip. We were going up there to play hockey and uh, do some fishing, and, and um, we happened to be in a, a, a restaurant, and she walked by, and I right when she walked by, I accidentally stuck my leg out and tripped her, <laughs> and that's kind of how our relationship started. It was, uh, of course, you know, which is a great way for a comedian's life with a woman to start. Uh, Playing a joke on her, basically. Yeah, and I didn't even know I did it. She turned around and she said, boy, you'll do anything to meet a woman, won't you? So um, she had some snappy repartee, and, and I thought, wow, she's really cute and funny, so I better go talk to her. And Stamos and his hair weren't there. That's why you were Luckily. able to... Thank goodness he didn't do that to me, because uh, when we were doing Full House and both he and I were single, we'd go out somewhere, and it was like I would ski in his wake and just... <laughs> Supermodels would be bouncing off of me. It was ridiculous. Uh, we are speaking with Dave Coulier. Going to be at the Wise Guys in West Valley Friday and Saturday night. And we hear that they're rebooting. I don't know who's exactly doing it, but they're they're making like a new Popeye. And we know you do a spot on Popeye, Dave. Yeah, I know the new animation, he still eats spinach, but he doesn't smoke a pipe. Uh, which is sort of yeah, bizarre, I think. You know, with all the legalized marijuana around the country now, you'd think that'd be more acceptable. <laughs> Not so much. Do you know exactly what he did? Because it's Popeye the Sailor Man. But what is that? 
Like I never saw him on a. Well, I guess he was sort of around boats, but he doesn't look like he's not a captain. Yeah, and you know, sailors have that uh, you know that reputation of uh, you know a girl in every port, and he goes after olive oil. He has some bad a- eyesight too. <laughs> yes, he does. Well, Popeye was incredibly squinty. Uh, he, we know he had the huge forearms, but the proportions of everybody were all off. Like Olive was practically two dimensional, and Brutus was the size of a house. Yeah, that that was a, a very. I mean, when you start dissecting cartoons, it, it really gets into uh, what were those guys smoking when they created those shows. <laughs> if you look at any of them. I mean, you you look at the old Mickey Mouse stuff. You look at uh, you know any of the Hanna Barbera cartoons, any of the Warner Brothers cartoons. I mean, it was. Pretty racy stuff when you when you think back of it. Bugs Bunny used to dress and drag. Yes, Porky Pig never. He just wore a vest, no pants, <laughs> like a tie. Yeah, I'm not sure when my pants are. <laughs> Did uh, you and Robin Williams ever get together and trade Popeye impressions? We never traded Popeye impressions, but um, what a loss! I mean, I, I tip my hat to him every night on stage because he really influenced me quite a bit and uh, couldn't have been sweeter or more kind to me when I was a 19-year-old comedian at the comedy store here in Hollywood. Um, He was so encouraging and pulled me aside one night and just said, hey, you know, oh, you're really funny, really, really funny stuff. And so, um, you know, he, uh, he will be sorely missed by generations here because he really paved the way for so many comedians to, uh, to do what we do on stage. And, and um, I actually copycatted his voice on the Mork and Mindy cartoon on ABC. And um, they called me one day and they said, Robin's going off. Actually, he was going off to film Popeye, the movie. And so they said, we hear you do a dead-on impression of Robin. Can you come in? We'd like to animate to your voice. And, of course, they picked me a lot less money. Uh, will you be doing any Robin Williams tonight on stage, uh, Wise Guys in West Valley? This is part of my new hour special that will be coming out here in the next few months called Glorified Birthday Clown. And I, uh, <laughs> I've been working on this set for about a year. And so this is kind of the culmination of a year's hard work of uh, a lot of, you know, things that, that really Full House fans will love. This, this set is really put together for the Full House fans. And, uh, you know, that cuts a wide swath, a very wide family demographic. So anybody can come to this show. Uh, you're not going to hear me dropping any four-letter words or F-bombs or anything. It's just good, clean stuff. Cool. Uh, congratulations on uh, your recent nuptials. Uh, have great shows this weekend. Dave, thanks so much for talking to us. Yeah, I appreciate all the shameless plugs. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Dave Coulier.